So uh, the skies have cleared on this otherwise pretty cold January day and uh, that can only usually mean one thing for me it's going to be a night with the scope doing some astrophotography so uh, join me tonight as we try and shoot the NGC 2174 the monkey head nebula in Orion We've got about a 70% illuminated moon to contend with tonight uh, but everything else looks to be fine low wind um, pretty cold temperatures but the bother me more than scope um, and yeah, the weather should stay clear through to dawn. Um, I'll lose sight of the target by about 2 a.m. this morning, I think, as it goes behind a neighbor's house. But um, after that, if it really is still clear, I may move on and do some uh, early time on a spring galaxy target. Stay tuned. So, as the moon's quite well illuminated tonight, it's uh, prime time really to be using my mono narrowband setup, which is the QHY163 with the QHY CFW2M US, it just rolls off the tongue, uh, filter wheel. Uh, inside there I have 36mm unmounted BADA LRGB hydrogen oxygen sulfur filters. Coupled up to the field flattener, matched the Esprit 120, which is also the scope. Uh, I only just got that a few days ago, so it's been nice to have a chance to test it now. Um, I did get first light um, two nights ago, but it, only, it wasn't the greatest night, but at least I got the chance to test the scope, so I leapt at it. Tonight looks much different, so I'm hoping for a very nice result, hopefully. I thought I'd show quickly set scope. This is the Esprit 120. Uh, it's brand new to me. Um, it's absolutely just been a dream scope of mine for a long time, so it's absolutely amazing to own it. So I'm hoping to have a long run of my career with this one. Um, it's a 120mm apochromatic refractor. Um, I'm guiding it with a small Skywatcher 50mm finder. Uh, which seems to work fine, is it's only 840mm focal length um, and it's all mounted on an NEQ6 Pro with belt modification So I've got my imaging laptop outside now just while everything's finishing cooling down so I'm ready uh, as soon as I can I thought I'd take a moment to talk about the image capture software and other associated software that I use myself. Um, so because this is a portable rig and I have to carry the whole thing outside and set up polar align each time, obviously I need to polar align. Um, I haven't looked through a polar scope though in uh, years, basically, it's ever since I discovered uh, SharpCap Pro. It has a really good polar alignment routine, um, it takes about a minute to complete and gets it far more accurate than I ever could in truth through the little polar scope. Um, of course, once you've done that, you're free to move on to your actual interesting parts of the night, um, for which I use astrophotography tool for actual image capture. Um, I find it's got a good object browser, a plate solve swim cell. Uh, plate solving software I use is ASTAP as it's incredibly fast. It just, uh, as long as you're predicted focal length for your telescope is quite accurate then you can find solves in two or three seconds usually. Um, the guiding software I use is the new EHD2 uh, with multi-star guiding. I have found a little bit of an improvement I think from the multi-star. Um, I mean it's not transformed by mount or something, I don't now need <laughs> to change mount at some point uh, but it's more than good enough especially for this focal length and uh, any improvement is always welcome, especially on free software.
So it's just reached about 20 past 6 uh, here in the UK. Uh, the scope's cooled and so have I by this point. Um, I've aligned, focused and plate solved to my target for the night, which uh, is NGC 2174, the Monkey Head Nebula, um, and I'm ready to start imaging. I'm going to be using 10 minute sulfur hydrogen oxygen shots tonight, dithering every third frame to uh, reduce the losses to overheads uh, as much as possible. So uh, the rig's been up and running now for about 90 minutes, uh, capturing 10 minute frames as I mentioned earlier. Of course that only represents three subs each in the uh, channels I'm using tonight which are hydrogen, oxygen and sulphur. Um, but it's usually about this sort of time that I like to slew away to a nice bright star and use my Binoff mask and check focus, make sure that no further cooling's occurred or focus shifted or any such thing like that. It's, um, it's time consuming but well worth it because you get so few clear nights that you need to really to make every single minute count. I just thought I'd quickly show the uh, view on my screen of an in-focus image using the Binoff mask for focus. As you can see they're all evenly spaced uh, spikes. It's not actually spikes when viewing through this HA filter but you get the idea you can still see the, the dots for instance are equally spaced uh, and that's how you know it's in perfect focus. So it's uh, currently just past 10 p.m. here. Um, I've been solid imaging, still shooting away those 10 minute subs. Um, a little bit of haze has blown in now, so conditions aren't quite so good as they could be, but I'm still gonna keep pushing on, see if we can get some more data. Um, I've my targets just passed through the meridian, so this is the perfect time to choose um, a bright star on the correct side of the meridian, refocus, and replace all of make sure everything keeps running smoothly. Here's a quick tip to just show you how to get straight back to a target that perhaps has a custom field of view uh, that you'd populate usually by filling in the RA and deck uh, coordinates panel on the point craft. So, you just need to navigate to a point craft, then open a previous image that you've already taken of the target. So I'm going to go back to around about here. Double click it to open it on your screen, and then you can solve the image that's actually on the screen. Should just take a few seconds, there you go. And now it knows exactly where that was pointing at the time. You can then instead just click solved and it will repopulate the RA and deck coordinates for you leaving you just free to go go to again and uh, don't sink to the current position because the last thing we were pointing out was actually Beetlejuice to focus. So it's now about 15 minutes past midnight and uh, my window to shoot the monkey head nebula is basically gone now. It's still larger clear outside. Um, it's a little hazy, but I'll take what I can get at this point. Um, so I think I'm going to move along now and start to shoot uh, a little bit of LRGB on uh, the Leo triplet, if possible. It's, I'm not expecting too much due to illumination of the moon, but I'd rather be shooting than not, basically. Um, so we'll just see what we get. Well, my uh, main target for the night, which was the Monkey Head Nebula, has uh, now set long since behind my neighbour's house. Um, I did slew away in the hope that I could capture some time on the Leo Triplet Galaxies uh, to spend the rest of the night on. Uh, but unfortunately, clouds have stopped play. Um, looks like there's no chance of them clearing anymore. I've checked the weather and that agrees. Uh, so this is, I think about it. There could be uh, more clear skies coming tomorrow, but well, that remains to be seen. <laughs> you can never really trust the uh, weather forecast. Well, 
Well, it's now about 6.15 on the 24th of January. Um, the weather forecast from last night seems to have been true. I didn't think it would have been earlier, but um, it has indeed started to clear up. So I'm gonna have another try, uh, get a second night's worth of data on uh, the Monkey Head Nebula in SHO. And if it does hold clear, then as I'd originally intended to, I do want to put some more time into uh, an, an early spring target, if possible kind of beat the seasons a little bit. So the scope's been outside a, a few hours now. Uh, it's fully cooled and I was just going out to check on the sky uh, to see if it's cleared yet, and it hasn't, but look at the size of that moon bow. Well, it's just turned about 9 p.m. now. Uh, I've been waiting and waiting for the skies to clear, and thankfully, finally, it just has. The, uh, the moonbow from earlier has disappeared now. That was quite cool to see. Uh, but now I'm ready to get going, get focused, get framed, and uh, add some more time to the target. So I'm uh, out with the scope again. It's just gone 10 past 10, and it's time again for a meridian flip. Uh, I'm going to refocus before I reframe my target, uh, get Beetlejuice in the frame as it's nicely placed just on the western side of the meridian, which is where my target's now moved to. I've uh, just got finished with framing and refocusing um, after my meridian flip, which in reality has only took about five to ten minutes, but it certainly feels like long enough on a night like tonight where it's uh, at least a few below, it's pretty damn cold. Uh, but still, it's clear skies so I can't complain. I, uh, I thought I'd just film a quick update. It's now about midnight. It's definitely not getting any warmer out here. Um, the scope's just finished another group of nine, ten minute exposures. Um, I tend to like to keep it around about that time, an hour and a half, in between refocuses and such, which is what I'm actually out here to do now. Um, that way, if you if you do get it wrong, let's say, and lose some data, you've only lost an hour and a half, and it's not like uh, the whole night. the scope uh, refocused and realigned now. Um, I'm back on the Monkey Head Nebula, hopefully I'll get another 90 minutes uh, before it disappears behind my neighbour's house. Um, that's probably going to be the last 90 minutes I'll get on it too. Um, hopefully if the weather does hold, then as I'd hoped till last night but was prevented by the weather, uh, I'd like to get a little bit of luminance and maybe some RGB on um, the Leo triplet galaxies. So, fingers crossed. So it's now about 1.35 a.m. Uh, the scope's just finished its last set of nine exposures. And I think that kind of marks the end of uh, my data acquisition for the monkey head. Um, I think in total now I've got around 50 subs. Um, sort of evenly divided between hydrogen, oxygen and sulfur. It's not perfect, but it's near enough there. Um, now since the sky has indeed stayed clear, going to move on. Uh, Leo's just up there and uh, see where I can get, even with this moon.
So just a quick update, it's around 3.15am now, um, I've just performed my second meridian flip of the night since I yeah, changed targets. Um, everything seems to be running smoothly so really you can't complain when things go like this. Um, weather forecast says it's going to stay clear till dawn. Um, I've just eaten which should help me stay awake, I always find that it does if you're hungry you're gonna get tired um, but yeah everything's staying nice smooth wind free clear guiding's good um, I think I've got about 90 to 100 minutes of subs so far on Leo Triplet uh, and I'll check back with you soon Officially, the end of my night now. Um, it's around about 6 a.m. Uh, it did stay clear all the way through. Um, I think between two nights, I managed to end up with about 50 exposures um, on the Monkey Head Nebula. And after switching to the Leo triplet, I got about 73 minute exposures to stack. So, be interested to see how they turn out, given that there's a uh, about an 80% moon um, that was quite nearby. But uh, you know, nights like this are just too too few to uh, to not at least try. If it's if it's terrible, I'll just delete it and try again uh, around new moon. But I'm always open. <laughs> just want to add that if you've stuck around this long and watched the video, then thanks very much for your time. I uh, really appreciate it. I had a lot of fun at least filming. I don't know about putting it together yet, but. <laughs> Sure, we'll soon see. So, uh, hopefully, there'll be another one. Oh, who knows?